In SOLIDWORKS, it is sometimes required to create reference planes in addition to the default front, top, and right planes. Reference planes can be created by selecting geometry to locate and orient the new plane. You can select geometry such as existing planes, faces, edges, vertices, surfaces, and sketch geometry to use as references to create the required plane. In this lesson, you will learn how to create reference planes using a variety of reference geometry. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's begin the lesson. To create a new reference plane, go to the Features tab on the Command Manager, and you should see Reference Geometry. If you click on the little arrow to expand that tool, you will see Plane. So click on Plane, and you should now see the Property Manager for a new reference plane. SOLIDWORKS makes the process of creating reference planes intuitive by allowing you to select the geometry you want to use as references. And SOLIDWORKS will then create the appropriate plane based on those selections. So let's create our first reference plane. In the Property Manager, you'll notice there are three selections you can make. In some instances, you only need two references, and in some cases, you'll need three references. So let's go through some demonstrations to explain what options you have available. For the first reference, make sure the selection box is activated and click on the front face of the part. When you do this, a preview will appear in the graphics area and several options should also appear in the property manager. So based on our first selection, we have some options here such as parallel, perpendicular, coincident, at angle, and offset distance. And these options will change based on the geometry you select as a reference. By default, the offset distance is selected for the geometry we just selected. And currently that is set to 10 millimeters. You have the option of changing the offset distance by simply changing the value. So we could change that to 30 mils. Below that, you have a flip offset. So if you put a tick in that, you can see it changes the direction of the reference plane. And you also have a number of planes to create. So to make that more clear, if I go back to 10 mils and start adding more planes, you can see that it's going to create multiple planes in the one command. When you create a plane, there is a message at the top of the property manager, which will tell you if your selections will create a fully defined plane. For instance, if we change this to a coincident, you can see it's going to create a fully defined plane. But if we change that to a parallel, it's now asking for additional references and constraints to be selected to create a plane. Such is also the case for perpendicular or at angle. It's still going to need more references to create a plane. If this is the case, it's referred to as an undefined plane. And if we try and click OK to accept it, you'll notice that a rebuild warning will appear. And that means you cannot even create the plane. So we need to select some more references or constraints to actually create a plane if we're going to be using some of these options. So let's further define our selections to create another plane. Change it to parallel. And then it should automatically change to the second reference. And for our second reference, and for our second reference, just hover your mouse over this edge here until you get to the midpoint. And once the midpoint is highlighted, click on that. With these two selections, you'll now see that it's saying it is fully defined. So we could create a plane from this. And what we have done is told SOLIDWORKS to create a reference plane that is parallel to the front face, but located at the midpoint of this edge. Let's clear both of these selections by right-clicking on them and going to delete and try something else. For the first reference, I'm going to click this edge from the first demonstration. And with this particular selection, you can see the options have changed. So we now have perpendicular, coincident, and project. As we switch between these three options, you'll notice that all three are asking for additional references or constraints to create a plane. For the second reference, just rotate the model a bit and then select this edge here. You can see it's going to say there is a rebuild error possibly. So we are going to try a coincident and you can see that it will create a fully defined plane using those two edges. Go back to an isometric view by pushing Control 7. And again, we're going to right click and delete to clear these two selections. In this demonstration, again, select this edge for the first selection. And for our second reference, click on this top face of the part here. 
you should be presented with options that are possible to use between the edge we selected for the first reference and face plane we selected for the second reference. If we use the angle option, we can flip the direction and then we can specify an actual degree of rotation. And you can go through and use any angle we want to. We can also create multiple instances of that, which would create multiple instances at a 25 degree between each plane. We can also use cylindrical faces as reference geometry. Again, clear the second reference by right clicking on it and going to delete. And for our second reference, click on this top cylinder face. You can see it's going to create a fully defined plane, which is creating a plane starting from this edge and it is in tangency with the face of this cylinder part. You will see a preview of a fully defined plane, which is going to be in tangent with the cylindrical face of the part. Notice what happens if I tick on the flip offset and it's going to put the plane on the other side of the cylindrical face. Another way of defining planes is by selecting a combination of points and vertices. Clear both of our reference geometry selections, and this time for our first reference, select this point. It should automatically change to the second reference selection, which we will pick on this point, the opposite side. And then for the third reference, pick the bottom corner here. With all three points selected, you can see that it's going to create a fully defined plane, which is cutting through from these two points to this point. When you're finished selecting your geometry and creating a plane, you just simply click on the OK to accept your reference plane. You can see the plane we created is now in the Feature Manager tree and can now be used for other features. You can also rename this plane just as you can with other features by either slow double clicking on the plane and then changing the name or just by clicking on it and then pushing F2. If you need to edit a reference plane, it's just the same as any other feature. You simply click on it and go to edit feature. You could then adjust the reference geometry or the position of the reference plane. Let's clear the reference geometry and go through one more demonstration. For the first reference, select the cylindrical face. And for the second reference, select the top face. Change the option of the second reference to at angle. And you'll see with this combination, as I change the degree angle, it is actually following the tangency of that cylindrical face. In this lesson, I'm unable to demonstrate every possible combination for selecting geometry and creating reference planes, but it should give you a base understanding of the process in creating them based on the reference geometry that you select. Before finishing the lesson, I want to show you a shortcut for creating reference planes based on existing reference planes. If we accept this reference plane we just created, click on the plane and then hold down control on the keyboard. Move your mouse back over the plane and you'll see the icon changes to like a, a little move symbol. And then you can drag that out. And then when you let go, it will create a new plane or at least be ready to create a new plane. From here, you can then specify a offset distance, which should be the default option. But you can also use the other options which have been covered in this lesson to create an entirely new plane based on that existing plane we just created earlier. So that's how you create a reference plane. You can use these to create other features and geometry. They're quite useful to know how to do, and you'll often use them in cases where you can't use those default planes, the top, right, and front planes. So you may have to create your own planes and then build geometry from those planes. Obviously, I can't cover every combination to create them, but it's worth your time to go through and just play around with the selections of geometry to see how it works and what planes are created based on that geometry. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's move on to the next lesson.